guys, welcome back to the Infamous Project. And this morning, going to be working a little bit on my own personal 1991 Dutch Coupe. Uh, this car is constantly undergoing some changes and upgrades, and this morning will be no exception. Um, I got a couple parts laying on the ground here behind me that we're going to be talking about. Restored Coney struts, installation of some caster camber plates, and finally a quick little alignment with our quick trick alignment tool that I recently picked up. If you guys saw my Dutch number no. five video where I was getting it back to a roller, I had pointed off to the back wall um, two old conies that came out of that car and they were covered with paint. They were just disgusting. They had surface rust. They weren't really in good cosmetic shape, but the function of them was fine. So you can see laying on the ground behind me, I've actually got them all cleaned up and painted and they look great. Um, the yellow is not Coney yellow. It is um, <laughs> a different yellow that I have found, but I did want to share with you guys the paint that I used because this paint um, is a new paint that I found recently and it's the same paint that I used on the Detch ASG and a bunch of my suspension parts and the stuff is just amazing and I am not sponsored, although I wish I was sponsored uh, by these guys, um, Seymour. And um, I was told when I went in and bought a bunch of these that they actually invented the aerosol spray can. So um, yeah, this is Safety Yellow, which is what I uh, did the struts in. The um, Dutch and suspension components is actually Safety Red, but they have a whole array of colors. And the stuff is awesome because um, well, it's industrial strength, it's high solids, um, it just, the coverage is amazing. Like you can actually get away with one coat and, um, it covers. So, so far so good. I've been using it on everything and you know what I mean? I've been letting it dry up, stuff gets banged around. Um, you know, it's not going to be like powder coat guys, but if you're looking for a good quality paint, I don't know for you guys south of the border. Um, if this is available, I'm assuming it is, um, but we managed, uh, or I managed to find it up here in Canada. It's actually, yeah, made in USA, samewarepaint.com, um, Illinois, and, um, I guess we got a place here in, uh, Windsor, Ontario. So there you go, guys, a uh, quick little one on that because you guys are always asking me the products that I use. So, um, I'll try and find some links to this stuff. Um, again, full array of colors, um, great product so far. Um, will it last um, in six months, a year? That I can give you a review on once I've fully tested it out. But based on what I've seen, this stuff is awesome. So why is the car in here? Why am I putting in or swapping out the Coney's? Well, I actually picked up this set of HPM caster camber plates and um, I wanna get these installed for two reasons. Um, the first reason is caster camber plates actually raise the mounting position of your struts up um, by the distance of the spacer and the plate itself. Um, so about an inch, three quarters of an inch to a full inch. And that actually gives you that much more travel in your struts, therefore giving you that little bit more travel in here. And when you're slammed down to the ground um, as low as I am, you know, the struts always sitting more compressed and lower. So what this is doing is it's giving it that little bit more give um, off the bat, which um, which helps with your overall ride quality. Second thing is um, I got those Coney Reds in the car right now and the Coney Reds have been working pretty good. Um, you know, I got them cranked all the way up, but I feel like the yellows might give me a little bit more stiffness in the rebound. I feel like when I'm going through um, you know, dippy bumps, there's just a little bit too much of this, um, kind of like a little bit of a float. And I'm hoping that the yellows are a little bit, um, I guess stiffer to a certain aspect in the rebound. All right, guys, so the wheels are off. Next up is pretty straightforward. We're going to go ahead, put the jack underneath the lower control arm here to support it. Then we're going to get these two 
large main bolts for the bottom part of the strut undone here. And we're gonna loosen off the uh, top bolt of the strut up here and we'll remove these plates and um, swap everything out. All right, guys, so this is the problem when you paint your engine bay and you mask around your um, strut mounting plates. And uh, to my friend Lewis, who did this, you should have taken this plate off before you painted the bay. Otherwise, you're going to be uncool like me. This is a uh, long time ago. I did all the rest of the engine bay when I did the car. I should have pulled these plates off. The worst part is you can actually pull these plates off and leave um the strut in there you'll just have the bolts coming through um and uh should have done it but there you go lessons learned guys all right guys so i want to make sure you got the right side to start and uh let's get one bolt started here Bottom side of our plate. We'll just, I'll get things snug and um, that'll be enough so we can tighten everything down. Gonna go ahead, repeat it all on the driver's side here. And then that'll get us in a position to uh, start setting some basic alignment up and um, get a test drive in and see how we feel about the new setup. All right, guys, so my SD card actually ran out of memory. And um, I don't know at what point the camera quit filming. But, um, you know, installing struts um, is pretty straightforward. You guys have seen me do it time and time again. So we got everything down there installed, bolted up. You have to wipe the grease off. And um, you can see here, the caster camber plates are installed. So everything is loose. So I got the uh, ability to move things around here and uh, try and get some alignment set up. So now I'm gonna go through, um, gonna put the wheels back on and then uh, go through this quick trick alignment set here. So let me get the uh, wheels bolted on. Then we're gonna jump into this kit here real quick. The wheels are back on and I have jacked the car up, removed the jack stands, and I got two pieces of two by four underneath each tire. And that plays an important role because I need to put the car down evenly and I just wanna put a little bit of pressure on just to get an idea of where the initial camber is set. So remember, these are caster camber plates We've swapped those and the struts, which means those two um, variables in terms of the suspension will be altered and we need to set them. We don't need to worry about adjusting the toe. So whether you know our wheels are cocked in or out, the toe was already set before and nothing has changed in the sus suspension geometry to have affected the toe. So what we're going to be dealing with is strictly uh, related to the caster camber, although our quick trick alignment tool can handle toe adjustments as well. So if we did something like change the tie rods or maybe the steering rack was out, any of those things, we'd want to go through and do the toe adjustments. So in this case, we don't need to do that. And um, if any of you guys are wondering, do I need caster camber plates? My personal opinion is no, you don't. There is movement on these strut towers with the factory plates that allows you to compensate for a good amount of um, changes to your suspension. I had this car within spec. Um, obviously I wanted some, <laughs> some camber uh, because I'm so low, but I actually still had it in spec if I wanted to with the stock plates. If your car has never been touched, you will see a little rivet that's been drilled um, are pressed in to the one side of the plate and um, that kind of sets the suspension from the factory. Now, anytime an alignment's been done, usually that rivet's gone and some movement's been, uh, been adjusted. Now, the aftermarket plates, again, 
my main reason for running these is simply to get the strut mounted up a little bit higher to get that extra little bit of suspension travel so that I can avoid potentially bottoming out when I'm going over sharp bumps. So that's my two cents. Unless you really need to get the adjustment, you're looking for serious camber, or for some reason your car is off, maybe um, it had a hit, it had an accident, it's twisted and you need to compensate, hopefully you don't. But um, I really don't think the average person needs to have these plates other than the fact that you wanna say you got them, you like the way they look, or you need aggressive camber adjustments in your car. Otherwise, um, the stock plates are fine. All right, guys, so here is the bag that you'll get, and you get a full manual that gives you directions on everything that you need to know about doing an alignment. Um, it's actually very, very detailed. It tells you what all the parts and all the components do, how to set them up. For any of you guys that uh, might not be as familiar with um, classic alignment uh, terminology, such as caster, camber, toe, and talking about understeer and all of those things. Um, so the first part of the manual is how to use and set up the tools. The second part um, goes into details in this chart about suspension adjustment and it shows you everything about caster, camber, toe, how everything works. So it's a really good, I guess, learning experience for any of you guys that are wanting to do this. So another reason why a kit like this is handy is not only if you're doing lots of suspension work, but some alignment shops don't want to deal with you if you are extremely low or even if you've altered your suspension in general. The problem with all the machines these days they have factory specifications, they type in your vehicle, make, model, and details. It gives them a set of specifications and they're only gonna try and align your car within that range. If you're lowered, you're gonna wanna be able to compensate for things or maybe they can't get you 100% in the range or what you're looking for and it seems like nobody wants to do math these days. So I've done lots of tape measurement alignments on the floor that really just helps out with your toe and my biggest thing is trying to get into more of the camber. So you can see here, there's a couple variations of these guys. So these are what actually go onto your wheels. So you can see these little uh, red caps. Um, those red caps, they come off and they got like little teeth and then they kind of grab onto your wheels. One on the top and these two on the bottoms. You'll see how this gets set up. And some digital readout displays on here. So this is gonna tell us um, our degrees and everything else that we need to know when we're setting our camber. I've already gone ahead and assembled these um, as per the instructions. You can see I have another rail here. This one is taller. And the only reason why I have this additional one is this one goes up to, they advertise a 22 inch wheel but they said that I'd be able to use it on my 23s on the Lightning. So that's why I got the, um, the longer uh, rails or sliders, whatever you want to call them. I give you this guy. This actually is to hold your steering wheel in place. So this locks and uh, will hold your steering wheel straight. So if you're adjusting your toe and you know, when you have that, uh, <laughs> it would drives my OCD nuts when your steering wheel is off a little bit when you're driving straight. Well, this is to hold your wheel straight while you're doing your toe adjustments. Get a couple tape measures. So this you can, these you lay down on the ground. Oh, one other thing. You put your front tires on this plate and the plate can rotate. So that'll help you with uh, some of your adjustments as well. What I'm gonna do now is actually start, uh, I'm gonna put the car down a little bit. I'm gonna get this set up on the wheels and gonna do some initial measurements with stuff with not full weight on the car. And then um, from there, we'll put all the weight on and see if we can make all of our necessary adjustments. Got the tools installed on the wheels here. You can see we're sitting level. You can turn this on and we can see what our uh, camber reading is here. Now, again, the car's jacked up and uh, there's no pressure um, on the suspension whatsoever right now. So this one we can actually see 
it isn't looking as level. Adjuster camber there, you can see what I did. I just moved this whole plate, right? And now we're actually zeroed. Oh, it likes that, it even beeps at you. So you can see the name of the game here. Again, can adjust this top plate here like this. So now we're actually uh, going the other way. So there we go. Let's see what we can get, uh, what we can get happening in terms of our camber. I'm probably not gonna get too involved into the caster on this video. Um, and again, if we wanted to do tow, um, the plates would be underneath the tires and then we'd use the two measuring tapes and then we'd be able to kind of see um, where we're at front and rear. So you'd run the tapes um, along the front side of the tire, along the back side of the tire, do your measurements and then you'd want to center everything so both sides are straight while keeping your steering wheel straight. So anyways, let's get some, uh, let's get some weight on the suspension. Yeah, I've got some camber going on. We don't even need to look at the uh, readout there. We can see the whole arm is tilted. We can see in level here that the, uh, that our air bubble is not centered between the two lines and we're sitting at 2.5 degrees. So if we go over to the other side here, this guy's got even more camber. I can see it already. The air bubbles all the way over and we're sitting at 3.4. I really don't need to be wearing out my tires, right? And you can see I have tons of room in the fender wells. These have been rolled, so I'm not too concerned about that. So what we need to do is try and get um, these guys to slide over and get us less camber. So, you know, if I have a degree of camber or so, I'd probably be okay with that. So for 2.5, and you can see, as I jack the car up, all right, 0.5. So we're losing about two degrees of camber when the car goes down. When the car goes up, everything was sliding over just because the weight was pulling it here. And we have half a degree of camber, which um, isn't too bad. Now the problem is, if you can see the tire straight up and down, um, might not do us too many favors, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten that up and then we'll put it back down and we're gonna see if it stays at 0.5 or what happens and how things look. All right, so weight on the car and just naturally with the suspension, when you let the car down, you know, it's gonna camber in just the way the McPherson strut um, suspension works. So we're sitting at 1.2 degrees um, ultimately, which isn't too, too bad. You can see our tire to a uh, fender clearance. We got a little bit of room in there. And if we got that extra degree out, it could potentially result in rubs, maybe not, but um, I'm pretty okay with that. I was hoping for somewhere around one degree. You can see you just got a little bit of slant inward, but nothing too crazy. Unlike this side, which uh, you can see all that crazy camber is sitting in there. So let's do the other side and see what kind of results we can get. All right guys, I've done my adjustments. I'm back and forth here. We're seeing at 0.9 degrees of negative camber on the passenger side. 0.9 degrees negative camber on the driver's side. So there we go, guys. Camber has been set, so we don't need to worry about the uh, inner wear of our tires. Um, could get into playing with the caster a little bit if you wanted to go into those details. Um, if you guys want to see another video um, in detail with the quick trick alignment tool, let me know and um, I can do the whole shebang. I really just wanted to give you guys an introduction to um, you know, swapping your struts, installing caster camber plates and trying to get your car set up um, so at least you can get driving down the road. I'm gonna tighten everything down 
crank these conies up all the way as far as they can go. Um, that's done by this little dial right here on the top. So we're gonna crank these guys up and uh, we'll do a road test. And uh, I'm hoping that these guys are a little bit stiffer than uh, those reds on the floor there that I pulled out. So there you guys go. Um, strut change, caster camber plate install, messing around with the quick trick alignment tool. A little bit of an update here. Took the car down the road over a couple bumps that I'm very familiar with because I hit them every time I'm coming out to the shop and going home. And uh, the car handled a lot better. Uh, so those Coney yellows, definitely you can feel the difference in the rebound. So that was a great improvement. And of course, um, I actually managed to fix up the alignment a little bit better as well because this passenger side had more camber than the driver's side did initially. So I'm happy with the way that it turned out. Um, again, caster camber plates probably given a little bit extra bit of travel for those struts. So happy there. Stance of the car is good. Cannot wait to get my other set of ROHs on this car so I can get those nine and a halfs in the rear. Those guys are sitting down at my shop in Texas. So uh, this guy's gonna be getting cleaned up and put away for the uh, winter season here anyways. And um, I'll have to figure out the logistics. So if you guys wanna see more about the quick trick alignment tool, um, I'm actually gonna be using it on the uh, dark emerald green notch. And um, so make sure you check out the video whether it was released before or after this one, I don't know, but um, I'll be going through that one. I got to do toe on and um, I'll be adjusting the camber and everything else. So make sure to check that one out.